Hello, how are you? I am so delighted to see all of you here today. What a powerhouse group of women we have here. There are women from 32 states, all four corners of the country, uh, and that's just amazing. And we have participants from 12 countries, from Argentina and South Africa, Finland, Iceland, and from as far away as Australia and New Zealand. Welcome all of you. We are so excited to be in LA uh, this year for many reasons. One is that we kind of outgrew the space at the Green Space in New York, which held 100 people. Um, and today, we have 600 people for all of today's activities and tomorrow. So uh, our, our wonderful sponsors at CPB, Pat Harrison, said, why don't you move the, this next year to uh, the West Coast and double the attendance? So we went from 100 to 600. We went six times the attendance. So that is great. And we are here in uh, Los Angeles in this uh, incredible space, which I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, there will also be many women from LA's own kind of film industry. Uh, being here means we get to hear from Nina Jacobson and Eileen Chaikin, women who get terrific stories to the silver screen and the little screen. Uh, Lena Waithe will be here. What a speech at the Emmys, huh? Yeah, it was historic and moving and so well-deserved. It was fantastic. And Kara Swisher is also uh, with us for this podcast festival, and she is one of my idols and one of the great women of tech and of journalism. Um, so I just want to tell you a little bit about this theater. So look around it, okay? This is an L.A. landmark, and it was part of the whole Broadway theater district uh, from, that was just hopping in the 1920s where movies were, you know, premiered every night and, you know, people standing outside. But this one was built in 1927, and the inspiration for this space came from Mary Pickford. Remember Mary Pickford, who was the silent movie actress and turned kind of producer and entrepreneur. And she, along with Douglas Fairbanks, who became her husband, and Charlie Chaplin and D.W. Griffith, got together, and they wanted to create an independent movie, movie company, one outside of the kind of uh, studio system of L.A., and, and uh, create something that was by artists for artists. And it was uh, United Artists. So they created United Artists, and they built two buildings, this theater, which was inspired... Uh, by a trip that Mary took with her husband Douglas on their honeymoon uh, to uh, Segovia, Spain. And she just decided that she would take that inspiration and ask an architect to design this space. And this became the United Artists Theater. And the building next door, the Ace Hotel, was the United Artists kind of, uh, you know, uh, big um, space for uh, all of the work that they did. And what, at the time was the tallest building in all of Los Angeles. I don't know whether you can see it right now, but there's a mural up there. And on the bottom right-hand corner is Charlie Chaplin in a hat. So this is a space that has a lot of history. And its history is about artists uniting with artists. And so there's no better place to be than for our uh, podcast festival, which is women artists helping and uniting with women uh, artists, producers and directors and hosts to create this new form. Um, and so I'm so delighted that we're here. Um, and I just want to tell you a little bit about why we started Work It. Um, it was several years ago, three or four years ago, there was a study that had come out that uh, looked at the top 100 podcasts, uh, and it said, you know, only 20% of these podcasts are hosted or co-hosted by a woman, 20%, and this was, you know, in the 2000s, right? Um, and it, what was happening was that podcasting was headed in the same direction as every other kind of entertainment medium, um, with, uh, you know, flooded with men, and frankly, white men, um, and there were only 20%. So this was this emerging industry in the 21st century, but the gender gap was already taking hold. Um, you know, we had been going around in public radio and in radio and in audio calling this a golden age for audio, but unfortunately the gender dynamics were the same old story. Women were working on podcasting and in radio and in other fields, but they were working harder and longer just to keep up with funding, with distribution, with decision making. But we're changing that. We created Work It three years ago to disrupt the disruption before the podcast industry went too far down that rabbit hole, to get female voices, a diversity of female voices, on the iTunes chart and behind the scenes. So at the first Work It Festival, I put out a challenge to all of the women and podcast producers in the room um, that in five years, we would reach 50% of the top 100 iTunes podcasts. So, 
we have made some really good progress. Um, but we knew that in order to achieve that goal, as we said, okay, how do we do that? How do we get more women's voices and more women behind the scenes? We knew we had to uh, help women understand the production, sponsorship, distribution, intellectual cap capital behind the mic. We wanted women to have the opportunity to shape podcasting, direct its growth, create its future. So if you were here yesterday and you heard Molly Webster talk about maybe land and these wonderful uh, you know, uh, visuals of how to create a podcast, or you heard Marianne and Emily uh, you know, talk about scoring, that's, that's what we knew that people wanted, that women needed. Um, we also knew needed, women needed to be inspired and have the confidence to lean in. So since then, women have flocked into this medium. It's amazing that with creativity, hard questions, uncomfortable answers, raw emotion, you brought intellect and smarts and humor. You brought yourselves, your superpowers and your vulnerabilities in all your brave, ambitious glory. And at Work It, we've aimed to create an environment which inspires you to find your idea, to visualize it, to get lost in maybe land, and to find your way to start a new podcast or to bring yours to the next level. And I'm so proud that we've made progress. There are many women that were at the first Work It um, who have begun podcasting. They had an idea on that first Work It and they began podcasting or they started a new podcast. Uh, Brittany Luce, uh, now at Gimlet, she started uh, that great uh, podcast, The Nod. Um, Lauren Ober, Ashley Ford, Christina Lopez, wonderful, wonderful women. And the Another Round folks, they, I think they did one of their very first podcast live tapings at that first Work It, and look at them last night. What a, what, they really rocked. Um, and the numbers reflect the progress. So if you look around about at what you have done in this room, we're now at 33%. We started at 20, we're at 33. So let's give ourselves a hand. We have some momentum. But we also have some work to do. At WNYC Studios, I'm really happy to report that nine shows out of our 20 shows at WNYC Studios are hosted by women or co-hosted by women. That's 45%. Um, but it takes a village. Um, so I just want to see in, with the, uh, hands, how many people are part of a podcast studio or a group that has a portfolio of more than one? Wow, great. OK, all of you in this room, I'd like to invite you to be part of kind of getting us all to the 50%. So take a look at your portfolios. Let us know where you are. Let's all try to get to at least 50% in the next year or two. If we can do it in this room, that will raise the level. Um, and so publish your stats, and let's all work to get to 50%. Um, our sisters in the television industry can tell us a revolution doesn't automatically get women to the front lines. Consider these statistics, statistics from the most recent boxed-in study by the Center for the Study of Women in Television and Film. Women comprise only 23% of all creators in the film and television industry. Yes, Shonda Rhimes, Ava DuVernay, Alana Glazer, Abby Jacobson, Mindy Kaling, Issa Rae, they're killing it, right? But really, only 23%? Across all platforms, cable streaming and broadcast, only 28% of women are directors, writers, producers, executive producers, editors, although that's better than it was last year. But we are going to set the, we're already setting the, uh, the, the benchmark in podcasting, and I want us to lead the way. Um, it's true that women own the Emmys this year with best comedy, drama, and limited series, all going to shows dominated by female characters. Wasn't that amazing? And they deserved it. <laughs> This was a year when some really brave women were vocal also about the constant sidelining of our voices and our truth. Ellen Powell in tech, Kamala Harris in politics, and Ariana Huffington in business, just to name a few. They used their positions and influence to speak for all of us. And there was pushback, but they counter-pushed. And that's no small thing, because sometimes that's actually the harder round, is counter-pushing. I'm sure every one of you have experienced that. You've struggled to speak your mind. You've been pushed and you counter push. And that's why I'm so proud of what's happening in podcasting because we are counter pushing. We're pushing and we're counter pushing. Podcasting can truly be a medium defined as much by women as by men. And when I say women, I mean all women, a diversity of women, pitching in, sharing, and doing it together. Magic happened yesterday in this room when you just are in a room full of women learning together, being inspired, and I know that it will happen in the next two days. It is my greatest hope and expectation that it will continue to happen afterwards. 
I just want to tell a story. If any one of you uh, read The New Yorker last, last week, um, they talked about Brittany Luce, who's with Gimlet's The Nod, which premiered this year. Um, here's how The New Yorker described Brittany's experience at the first Work It conference. Luce heard about Work It, an invitation-only women's podcast festival put on by WNYC, and asked Alex Bloomberg, who's the head of uh, Gimlet, if he, if he could get her an invitation. And he did, and she went. It put me in the room, she said. The connections she made there were a big boon, she said. Luce and Eddings had been making for colored nerds in isolation. We didn't know anybody who made a podcast, Eddings said. Now they had momentum, and things happened quickly in all arenas. So you are in the room, the room where it happens, OK? Make connections. Help each other. Help to build pop podcasting to be a reflection of the diversity of this great country. In podcasting, everyone in this room can create your own characters, tell your own stories. We don't have to be relegated to fitting ourselves into the roles that a group of male decision makers deems appropriate, sellable, or allowable. As Jessica Williams has said, podcasting allows African-American women to be the stars of their own stories. Um, so just for a moment, turn to the person next to you and introduce yourself, OK? Because it is the power of the connection. I love that. I love it. Hello in the front row. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you're going to continue doing that. This is what I love about women. You're, it's, okay, stop. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take these connections and you're going to run with them. I want you to share with, with the people that you've gotten to know and so many other people in this room. I want you to share your idea, whether you have an idea for a podcast or whether you have an idea of how to bring your podcast to the next level. What drives Work It is the promise that more women can play bigger roles in the podcasting movement moving forward. What drives this is very simply you and the connections you just made and that you will make. I want to echo the thanks for our sponsors, for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, thirdlove.com, Mac Cosmetics, for encouraging women to be their own true selves. And a special thank you to Cole Hahn if you uh, get to do that, uh, the uh, wonderful uh, kind of drawing that they're doing, do it. If you get to have your face made up by Mac, please do it. It's great. And I also want to thank the Annenberg Foundation for funding scholarships for many women to attend this conference. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't give an incredible shout out to the team. You just saw Jennifer and Paula, uh, the team from WNYC Studios, Jennifer and Paula, Denise Bennett. Yay, they are, they are amazing. And you know, there are also two men behind the scenes from WNYC Studios, and I wanna give them a shout out, Ricardo and David, yeah. Um, just by a show of hands, out of curiosity, one of the things I love to do at WNYC is to invite women in and also then to see women who have left to see them blossom. So raise your hand if you've ever been associated with WNYC Studios. Look at that. It's just amazing. Thank you. And you are all, whether you're with us now or at, at other places, uh, carrying the torch. Um, and I also want to give a thank, uh, big shout out to Jennifer Farrow from KCRW, who actually is traveling in Istanbul uh, today, and also Bill Davis and the crew at KPCC for co-hosting the public performances and for being your great LA public radio stations. Let's give them a shout out. <laughs> so, um, you know, this idea for Work It was created after I read this research study, and I talked with Pat Harrison, who is the head of CPB. Uh, and we talked about what could we do, and we dream, dreamt up this idea. And she was a partner all the way through and has been a huge, huge supporter of women in podcasting. Um, Pat was supposed to join us, but at the last minute um, had a, a medical issue that she had to deal with. Um, but in her place, we are so, so delighted that uh, Kathy Merritt is here with us. She is, but by the way, Pat's fine. 
So, uh, I, sorry, I don't want mean to. Um, I, in her place, we have the great Kathy Merritt, who uh, many of you know. If you know Kathy, she was at CPB. She left. She went to PRI. She's recently come back to CPB as the senior vice president of journalism and radio. What could be more important, journalism and radio, at this point? Kathy also has a record of championing women's voices, both at PRI and now at CPB. Among her many accomplishments, she was the architect of the Public Radio Talent Quest, which launched New Voices, and Local Lore, an air project that explores new ways of storytelling. So we're lucky to have her here with us. So let's welcome Kathy Merritt. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you to Laura. And thank you to you for <laughs> recognizing the height differences that happen in life. Um, first, I just have to say how incredibly disappointed Pat Harrison is that she can't be here today. If you've been to work it before, you know she loves this gathering. And she was the one, as Laura said, who, who said, go west, make it bigger, make it better. So she will be here next year. I, I'm sure you can write that in stone somewhere. And she sends her very best to, to all of you. But she did ask me to check in on the goal that she set last year at Work It. Do you guys remember what she said last year? Let me quote her. What we want is total world domination by women in podcasting. So how are we doing on that? We're getting there. We're really getting there. And I have to say, Laura Walker is helping to lead the way. I just want to give her another round of applause. Her commitment to having all the WNYC studios podcast, not all, half uh, hosted by women is fantastic. Although if Pat were here, she would say half. Um, you know, why stop at half? but I know we're well on the way to making women more and more of a force in podcasting. I see it in the new podcasts that come out on a weekly basis, the new podcast companies that are being started by women, and certainly through all of you, all the energy and enthusiasm of all of you sitting here today. So thank you for that. There's simply not enough hours in the day to listen to all of your podcasts. So even though I want you to create more, I cannot keep up, just so you know. Um, CPB has supported Work It for the past three years, and we're really proud that we've helped make this conference a must for women podcasters, a place where women get to do things that I think women do pretty well, which is talking and learning together, sharing problems, finding solutions, and cheering each other on. I know there's competition. I know this is very demanding work, but you know, we have each other's backs. And that's a terrific thing. And we're making sure that women's voices are heard loud and clear on this platform that is growing in audience and influence. And just to echo what Laura was saying a little bit, the statistics are pretty amazing. You know, if you were an alien on another planet and you were just monitoring the media of the globe, you would think that women only make up 25% of the population of this planet instead of 50%. So we have to change that. And I follow the uh, annual reports of the Women's Media Center because they look at the, the gender gap in media. And I just wanted to share this one quote from their latest report, which was released back in March. Men still dominate media across platforms, television, newspapers, online, and wires. With change coming only incrementally, women are not equal partners in telling the story, nor are they equal partners in sourcing and interpreting what and who is important in the story. Let's make sure podcasting is different. Let me tell you about a few other things that we've done to support podcasting at CPB. One is Project Catapult, and I know they're in the room here today, led by PRX, which is led by amazing woman, Carrie Hoffman. Catapult is helping a group of public radio stations figure out how to create and sustain podcasts that make a difference locally or regionally. And about half of the podcasts that they're working with are hosted by women. Tan Tan at KUOW hosts Second Wave, where she goes on a quest to better understand her Vietnamese American identity. And you might have seen her piece in the New York Times yesterday talking about 
um, kind of her take on the PBS series, The Vietnam War. From St. Louis Public Radio, We Live Here, which is co-hosted by Camille Stanley. It was launched after the death of Michael Brown in Ferguson, and it continues an in-depth exploration of racism in communities in and around St. Louis. And Inflection Point, which comes out of KALW in San Francisco, creator and host Lauren Schiller shares stories of extraordinary women leading change in the world. So these podcasts are helping to lead change in the world. And there are just a couple of others that I want to mention. Civics 101 from New Hampshire Public Radio, CPB is helping to support that. It's also hosted by a woman, Virginia Prescott. Is she here? Are we applauding Virginia? The podcast I know is represented here. It kind of makes up for all those classes in junior high when you didn't pay attention, you know, and you're like, what is a filibuster again? Or what does the White House Chief of Staff do? Or why do we have an electoral college? Um, it's become a go-to resource for anyone who wants to make sure that they understand more about how our democracy works. And then one other podcast that recently launched that's led by a woman, The Frontline Dispatch. Rainey Aronson Rath is executive producer of Frontline, the PBS investigative documentary series. And she is now hosting the dispatch. And she was just at the CPB board meeting this week. And I loved what she had to say about podcasting because here is someone so steeped in video. You know, this has been her life for many years. And she said, I've discovered that audio allows us to tell certain stories that just don't work in video. Many of us in this room know this. Um, there are just times when a camera intrudes on privacy and impedes the intimacy of an interview. So the Frontline Dispatch is forging new ground for investigative journalism and podcasts. And by the way, it debuted in the top 10 podcast on iTunes, so not bad work there. CPB will continue to support podcasts and the women who make them. It fits squarely in our three Ds, digital, diversity, and dialogue, the priorities that guide our thinking and our funding to help public media be more present on digital platforms, include more diverse voices, and engage more people in dialogue that shapes our civil society. So in closing, I would offer to channel Pat Harrison, but I just don't have that Brooklyn accent down yet. Um, she often quotes her hero, Winston Churchill. That just didn't seem right for this crowd, Winston <laughs> Churchill. Um, so instead, let me quote someone else who has served as an ambassador to the world, an elder stateswoman, Madeleine Albright, she said, it took me quite a long time to develop a voice. And now that I have it, I'm not going to be silent. So let's make some noise, work it. Let's get out there, continue with all your great work, and thank you for everything that you do. So instructions are sit tight. We've got the first panel coming up in just a few minutes. And I guess you can continue meeting each other now, the instructions that Laura gave. So go for it. And thank you very much.